This video is brought to you by the Vampire Ghost of Dennis, available on iTunes, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Smashwords. Physical copies available on Amazon and at Radar Toys in Eugene, Oregon. Hey guys, Jake. Ben. We're uh, gonna go see Dark Phoenix. Hooray. I mean... Fox's farewell to the X-Men I'm kind of excited franchise. and kind of not. I love Sansa. Right. But I'm not sure this is uh, the movie I really wanted to see her in. They, they should have chose a different... Another, uh, why did they have to go back to the Phoenix? They could have chose a different storyline, I think. Yeah, there's, there's so many, hundreds. so many different ones they could have went with, but then they just went right back to the dark, to the Phoenix. I mean, it's like, come on. Well, this is why Marvel's getting it. We we have high hopes for Marvel. Yeah, and I just hope they 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 do not do a Phoenix storyline anytime soon. At least I know they'll yeah. do it better. Yeah. But let's let's stay away from Phoenix for a little while. I mean, unless they actually told the right story, I, I might, you know, true to the comics story, I might be interested in seeing that. Mm -hmm. The M. Cron Crystal and the Shi'ar Empire and all that stuff. Yeah, well, I'm fine if they change it up a little bit. It's just bad. Fox was really bad with uh, changing up the comics. Absolutely. You know, Marvel's way better at it. Yeah. It's, it's the people who's paid for us don't know much about it and wants to make these changes like they don't understand why people are, are going to see that yeah Brian Singer is just not the the one and for some reason Fox just kept him on you know I mean I understand the movies made money and everything but they would have made way more if they were good. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. The first X-Men movie was okay. But after that, it just went... <laughs> straight down. Yeah, well... I mean, I understand that there's a lot of changes sometimes that have to be made. But, I mean, think about it. They're probably killing that universe anyway. They could have went with, like, a brute storyline where a bunch of people die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could have even did, like, um, what I would have done, okay, is, uh, like, a dead bill, Deadpool kills the Fox universe. Oh, yeah, dude. I would have. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. That would have made so much money. Fuck yeah, dude. And it would have been a bang for them to go out on. And then... Marvel could have rebooted everything and kept Brian Reynolds as, as Deadpool and just said, Screw I would have loved to else. see a murder all. Yeah. <laughs> Go after the Fantastic Four, you know? <laughs> it, what would have been cool with that, though, is if they would have brought the Fantastic Four from both Fantastic Four movies. Right. Uh, so the one and two and the campy, kind of fun ones. And the really terrible, bad re, uh, reshoot one. Right. And just killed them all. <laughs> I've killed all three Spider-Mans. Oh. <laughs> you mean two? But Sp Spider-Man wasn't in Fox. I'm just talking about Fox characters. Yeah, that's... So, they could that's have, right. That's yeah, right. Fun, uh, Sony. 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 Spider-Man Spider -Man. is Sony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The funny thing is, is about that, though, is the same lady is uh, has been involved from Spider-Man One, the first Spider-Man movie. Really? Yeah. I can't remember her name or shit, but she she's been involved with all of them. Same with the guy that um, for the Venom movie, he designed the first Venom in Spider-Man Three, and. He does. He pretty much helped design the the new film too. Right. I mean, he did a much better job this time around. But he's probably the one that said, "Let's get put a red wig on, uh, on what's his face, Cletus Cassidy. 
Oh yeah. Oh, uh, um, uh, oh, help me out, help me out. Woody. Woody Harrelson. Harrelson. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Woody Harrelson. <laughs> oh man. And have you seen these Child's Play posters? No, but I've seen the preview. They're hilarious. They're using Toy Story toys. Nuh-uh. On the poster. Yeah. It's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> That's great. It's, it's, it's fantastic marketing for whoever's doing that. I just, I, have I to love see it. that, yeah. I'll, I'll show you when we stop and uh, get to the theater and everything. But, yeah, it's 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 hilarious, man. I just saw the, the Rex one that they did this morning. It's hilarious. Oh, that's going to be great. Yeah, I mean, it's where you can tell that it's them, but it's not really them, you know? Right. So, it's like a, a bootleg version of the Toy Story toys. Right, right. It's hilarious. Just hilarious. That's going to be good. Uh, I mean, I really have high hopes for that one. I don't. To get away from one the of my, campiness. I don't have high hopes from it because it's one of my favorite 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 horror movies genre or like all of them uh, the child's play movies okay it's the whole collection i love them all uh really? child's play and uh and, and, and puppet master are my two favorite collections of movies even though some of them are just bad as bad can be but i just love them child's play puppet remember master. the one with the girl doll you mean tiffany yeah, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's freaking amazing. Um, I'm trying to talk my wife into letting me get the dolls. Like the life-size Chucky and Tiffany dolls. Oh, man. That would be great. I'd like one for you. I haven't got them yet. <laughs> but I will. I will. I will definitely have them. Uh she even likes the one that talks, the Chucky that talks. Wow. She does like her. Wanna she play? Like, oh, she'll let you have those dogs. No, she'll let me have. Ha! Ah! <laughs> let me have. That would be great. The kid's probably going to think they're all coming alive like Toy Story. <laughs> no. Uh, but, like, they have them over at Spencer Gifts for, like, 50 bucks. They're kind of bad uh, looking dolls like they don't look like the necessarily the original dolls right but the originals are like 300 bucks what uh, yeah wow so I'll take what I can get no we'll see I really enjoyed the first child's play movie it was good after eh, the second one was okay too but then uh, they kind of went on like really campy the, I mean, it's the same thing that Friday the 13th did for long not Friday the 13th but uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street yeah where they just got kind of campy and just knew that people were going to pay to see it because it had the name in it. Yeah, I agree. I just, I thought they were fun movies, you know. It, it, they didn't yeah. really have to be good. Right. They just had to be it fun. It was fun. And that's it, what I... In the same way that Ernest Goes to Camp was fun. Yeah, exactly. I love that movie, too. I mean... Good old Ernest. Yeah. John <laughs> Cena. I mean, Ernest... They, he looks just like him, dude. He should straight up do an Ernest movie. Yes. <laughs> Damn, Ernest got jacked, yo. Right? Ernest goes to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Big Ben. <laughs> oh, uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be. That would be pretty, pretty hilarious to add to the, the Ernest movies. Uh, I mean, he can he can do the whole wrestling angle too, where he, Ernest gets swollen and then they see him and they want him to wrestle and all that stuff. He can get all his friends to join. <laughs> that would be pretty hilarious. They, uh... Anyway, I'm really really excited, but I don't have a whole lot of hope for the movie because. But I have, I'm excited because Mark Hamill is Chucky. Really. Yeah. Nice. I just want to see them get away from the campiness to get a serious tone. To, to remember when scary movies was scary? <laughs> no, not really. Never. 
<laughs> I remember when scary movies turned into slasher movies. I remember when scary movies were really cheesy. Oh, man. Um, but I do not remember when scary movies were scary. Actually scary. Um, no scary so the, movie has ever scared you. Friday, or no, not Friday. Uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, one of them. I don't remember. I was like real little when I saw it. Uh -huh. Scared the shit out of me. And then I ran into my mom, and she just told me it was makeup. And I was like, oh, okay. So all movies are fake, and it's all makeup. And I just loved like horror movies ever since. Uh, right, and the but blood you, and all that stuff. But you gotta. But nothing has ever like scared me. The only the I like when I get chills. Okay, and nothing. There, there's only one or two little things that's ever really given me chills. Okay. One of them was in The Conjuring, actually. Actually, maybe even two of them were in The Conjuring. Uh, one where she's uh, they're playing the hide and seek game and they clap, mm -hmm. and then. Out of nowhere, the hands come out of the little cupboard and go like that. Sent chills up my spine because the girl wasn't in there, and it was like, you know, and it, it that was creepy, man. Right. You know, that was great. That was an amazing thing. And then when the chick uh, like jumped off, the demon like jumped off the top of the the uh, the cabinet thing or the cupboard. That was great. And then it just, then it just got kind of stupid, and it like showed way too much of the, the demon. They tied her up to a chair, and it was like, fucking, exorcist right, moment, right, you know. Um, and it yeah, just yeah. got way too cheesy, at that point. But those two scenes were amazing, and if I, I think that if they would have kept it like that, it would have been probably one of the creepiest movies I've ever seen. Um, and then they had what? What was the newest one? that I just saw recently. Um, it was pretty bad as far as like a, a movie is concerned, but it had some really creepy parts to it. Um, the Possession of Hannah Grace. I mean, bad movie. Terrible, terrible mm -hmm. movie. Holding your hand through the whole damn thing, trying to set shit up where it shouldn't have. Like, uh, at one point, she was like making a rubber band ball. And you're like okay that's gonna come in to play somewhere you know um like like tennis ball or whatever you know uh, i didn't need to be shown that she was the one making the tennis or the the rubber band ball and and then she was going to the bathroom at one point uh and she was leave she washed her hands and she walked out and the freaking air dryer came on automatically and you're like okay that's gonna come in you know, at some point, and mm -hmm. then you were, you know, and then they had the, the, the motion lights. You're like, okay, that's gonna come, you know, and then, the motion lights would come on, or wouldn't come on when the when Hannah Grace was like moving around the building and stuff, but then it came on, or the the dryer came on when she went by it. Didn't make any damn sense. I don't, I don't know. Right. And then it was like. Um, Demons are still trying to get used to that technology, well, I guess. I guess. I mean, I don't know. But and then it was like, okay, so this chick didn't kill this other chick for some fucking reason. Nobody knows. Right. Uh, but she killed everybody else. It's like the person that was down there the longest amount of time, she didn't kill. But everybody else, even including people outside of the morgue, she killed. Great writing, people. Great writing. Um, oh, you know what? I haven't seen that one yet. No, it's on my my account. All right, all right. Uh, I got it for free when uh, because you do the see so many movies get the free digital copy and whatnot. Yeah, I have to check that one out. Yeah, it's on there. Um, but it was it was bad, but it had a couple of creepy points. Um in it like when she was like cracking her bones and when they cut back to her and she was in the same exact position that she was before only now she's like healed a little bit more and stuff it was really creepy wow but again the rest of it was really bad so there was some cinematography that was you know really good but the 
acting, the story, everything else was just fucking terrible. Well, that that kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, it had, it had a good idea. It just, like, held your hand throughout the entire thing. And, like, told you certain things and then even kind of joked about other things. And you were like, well, yeah, what, what the fuck? What, what's going on in this movie? You know? So, it's, it's not like a... a Marvel movie where they joke about something or they shoot off a one-liner that explains a whole bunch of other stuff, you know? Right, yeah. Uh, this one just didn't do that. And it was it was terrible. Um, and there was another one that was terrible. Um, <sighs> Hereditary. That was bad. That was bad. So I'm really questioning the, uh, the new one that the guy did. It's called, what is that one called? That one's called, uh, I just read something earlier that said Jordan Peele said this was brilliant and like the best horror movie he's ever seen and all this other stuff. And I'm like, did you see Hereditary? I want to know what his thoughts about that movie <laughs> was. Because that movie was like, oh my God. She was like, so the mom was like, um, oh, don't forget you're allergic to peanuts. Don't forget your EpiPen. And it was like two or three little things like that that was just, that, okay, yeah. well, who cares, you know? They don't and then to, that led up to... That's for the audience. Well, yeah, it's for the audience. And I don't need that, though. When right. I'm, You know, if she's fucking allergic to peanuts, once, you know? Once what, is all we need. What one scene of her grabbing an EpiPen... Yeah, or grabbing toward peanuts and saying, nope, remember, you're allergic. And then that's it. Or, yeah, Don't that, hold my hand and tell me two or three times throughout the entire movie that you're allergic. Or, you know. Right. It's, I didn't need to know that. It wasn't that important. You know? I mean, it kind of was, but then, it, you know, I didn't need to know it that many times. And then it just drug on and on and on you could have edited 45 minutes out of the movie and it would have been a better movie <laughs> you know it was like a short film that they decided to extend for some reason right and then um, I think that was the two biggest fails that I was really hoping for as far as like horror movies rented one the other day that was what the hell was the name of it come on man slow down now have you seen the, the second death day yet yeah. yeah was that any good I liked it yeah the death good. day happy death day and happy death day to you were really decent movies nice well yeah uh, they, they were, were the so, first one was a cool spin on the groundhog day right thing. And then the second one was kind of that, but it was different, which I really, really liked about it. It wasn't the same thing. It had a completely different thing going on for it. Nice. And it, it didn't feel like I was watching the same freaking movie again. Even though a lot of the moments were the same kind of moments, you know, like she went back to live that same day uh, once or twice during the movie, but it didn't feel like the same movie at all. Because I don't know how they did it, but they did a freaking fantastic job in doing that. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I was really surprised. Really, really surprised. And it being like a PG-13, I was even more surprised because I hate PG-13 horror movies. Even though I don't look at that as a horror movie, that's more of a suspense movie, you know? Right. Where you, but, and then I really liked, um, what was it, Truth or Dare? I mean, it wasn't a great movie. That one was that. okay, yeah. I watched but I really again. liked the ending. The ending is what I really, really enjoyed about it. Because it wasn't a generic ending for me. I was like, oh, well, that's really smart. You know, that was actually an ingenious way to end the movie. Versus, you know, oh, everything's okay. You know. Yeah. Um, so I felt that the ending was really great. The, the rest of the movie was eh, but, yeah. Yeah, that one was, that one was 
I mean, I don't know what it is about kids always wanting to go to abandoned houses. Because it's fun. <laughs> it's fun not only, especially like if you're not scared of it, it's fun to scare the shit out of other people that are. Um, <laughs> but it's fun, you know? I mean, I used to do that as a kid, you know, teenager. Um, you know what I did? We did go see uh, a lot over the past Oh, week. man, I want to see that. Was it good? It was fantastic. Was it? It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Mom, you enjoyed it, yeah? Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, so I was really skeptical. I am like, Aladdin and The Lion King are my top two like, Disney animated films right. ever. And I can agree with that, yeah. I, I, I was really blown away. I was really skeptical of the whole thing. Uh, but Will I, I give it an 8.5 Will Smith had some big shoes to fill. He did, and he did freaking amazing. Really? He was wow. absolutely amazing. He took the the iconic genie character and made it his own. He wasn't trying to copy uh, uh, Robin Williams. He wasn't trying to take over for him. He did, just did his best, and he did a fantastic job. Nice. I think... In my opinion, in my personal opinion, he was the best part of the movie, nice. hands down. Um, the only thing, uh, there was a couple of things, and I won't spoil anything for you guys or for you. Um, there was a few scenes missing that I wasn't happy it was missing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really wish there was a few scenes in there. Um that they cut out. I understand why they probably cut it out. Um, but I just... To me, those are iconic scenes and you shouldn't have cut them out. Right. Uh, but other than that, and the Jafar... The guy that played Jafar was... Okay, he did a great job acting, but I, I would have liked a deeper, maniacal-sounding voice. Right. You know? Like, a, a, he could have done the acting, and then Adam Driver, for instance, could have done the voice for him. You know? Just a deeper right. voice. Uh, other than that, fantastic movie. Fantastic Dude, movie. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I... Oh, I loved it. I Yeah. I, well, I mean, you know, I, I liked what Disney did with their other... Uh, remake animation, so yeah, the live action ones. Yeah, the the Jungle Book and Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> Cinderella is actually really good too. But I wonder what they're gonna do like a Toy Story live action now. <laughs> that would be cool. I mean, that that wouldn't be too hard to do. No, you just. I mean, this obviously the toys and stuff could still be. Uh, uh, CG, or you could get right. Tom Hanks and and uh, Tim Allen to, <laughs> to to come out there and act everything out. I bet they get along good nowadays. Well, yeah, I mean they've done tons and tons and tons of. Uh, I'm gonna go this way, asshole. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, all right, guys. Just cut back from uh, Dark Phoenix. Yep. Uh, we'll go with, uh, let's do Mom's impression first. Mom, what was your uh, impression of the Dark Phoenix movie? It's okay. It's okay? All right. Ben? I liked it. I liked it better than a lot of the other ones. However, there was a lot of problems. Okay. Um, what kind of a rating would you give it, or what kind of movie would you compare it to? Um, I'd give it like a maybe a seven point five. Really? Yeah. The special effects were really good. I agree. The the acting from the performers was pretty good. Um, there was a few problems with the script that uh, 
sometimes you can't act your way out of <laughs> especially Jennifer Lawrence yeah yeah Jennifer Lawrence uh, the other J-Lo mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so m mine is I, I give it a four star four four Wow, that's uh, low. That's really high in my in my point of view. Um, and I, I I won't spoil anything yet, but I felt like the very beginning of the movie was good until the time jump. It's not a spoiler. Mm -hmm. um, and then after the time jump, it was really terrible until it got to like the third act and then it got better it was at a one star though like yeah, I had it at a one star until all the action really jumped in and started uh, but spoiler now spoiler alert uh, <laughs> yeah. so <sighs> Jennifer Lawrence she just she might as well not even show up yeah. They could have just said, oh, she died. Or Jean, Jean Grey died, killed her off screen. She didn't even have to show up. She was just terrible. It's yep. like she w didn't even want to be there. Yeah, I, I kind of got that feeling, too, you know? a little bit. Um, well, then, I mean, she kind of throughout the whole movie was like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> That's why she kept saying it, I don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <Leave>. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's take up. Let's go somewhere She's else. Like, Let's not do this. Uh <laughs> So I felt her her acting was terrible. Everybody else, though, I felt was really good. Sophie Turner did a magnificent job as Jean Grey in this movie. Right. Uh, they, they tried to put some stuff together that just didn't work. Yeah. Like, they tried to take elements from the original storyline and take elements from the movie storyline and kind of mix them together for... The effect isn't as strong. Yeah. So like, like the kids naming her the Phoenix, and then her turning into the Phoenix. Why would the, Why would the kids name her the Phoenix? They why would she no, turn into a Phoenix? They had no reason to call her that. Right. But what? Why would she turn into a Phoenix at the end of the movie if the kids named her that? She wouldn't just do. Is she like throwing a shout out to the kids that named her the Phoenix? Right. <laughs> like, Yo, shout hey, out, kids, homies. check it out. I'm doing this for you. Thunder Cougar Falkenberg. You know? Do that little uh, Justin Bieber <laughs> thing, you know? I mean, come on, man. That was just stupid. That was stupid. Okay, I understand. I could understand if she did that and then they called her the Phoenix. Uh-huh. Cool. All right. But not flopped. Like that. Right. That was just bad. Um, I... I really like the actor who does, who plays Cyclops, but which I don't like that? him as Cyclops. What, which one I don't that? remember his name. He was in Ready Player I One. I mean, what though. did he look yeah. like? Because I don't know which one Cyclops. Uh, the one, that, the shoots one that, the that shoots the beams out of his eyes. The beams out of his eyes. Yeah. Oh, the uh, one with the thingy. The one with the special sunglasses. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's Nicholas Holt. I'm Is it sure. Nicholas Holt? That, okay. Yeah. 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 So I really liked him in Ready Player One because that's yeah. one of, that's a great movie. Um, but he just, he was not on point. Well, and here's, the, here's the thing, and it would have made sense if they would have just even slightly explained it a little bit. In the comics, Scott and Gene hold a special psychic connection they call a rapport. A rapport. Yeah. Okay? This psychic rapport spans across space anywhere. Right. Right? They always know when someone's in danger. They always know... When someone's dead or alive, right? Right. If you add that into the equation, Scott's actions make sense. Well, I'm not even talking about all that. I'm talking about like um, his and, and Sophie Turner's chemistry. Oh, screen. there is none. There's no, there's no, none no, whatsoever. No. I mean, she had more chemistry with fucking. Uh, 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 Come on, help me out. On <laughs> Ramsey? Ra yeah, Ramsey. <laughs> she had more chemistry with Ramsey, man. Yikes. I mean, <laughs> she had more chemistry with Ramsey's dogs. <laughs> man. Right? 
I mean, <laughs> this just, it wasn't there for me. The chemistry just wasn't there. No, no, it wasn't. Um, what was the deal with, like, the but, relationships that were never there? It's just, so, yeah. like, okay, they wanted us to feel so bad that Mystique died, but it didn't make me love her in the first place. Yeah. I mean, am I supposed to love her from the other movies? What would she... When she tried to keep... When she was the bad guy, practically, uh, in Days of Future Past, or when she was, wasn't was even really relevant in, in um, First Class or mm-hmm. uh, or uh, uh, Apocalypse. When, when was I supposed to fall in love with the Jennifer Lawrence's mystique when she was... Uh, Freaking the, the supermodel. There was uh, no real redemption arc oh, uh, for uh, her other than, oh, I'm I'm gonna shoot, Rebecca you know, Romain. Magneto. Yeah, Rebecca Romaine. Was I supposed to fall in love with her character then, and then feel bad that she died now? Like, you know. Right. Do, and why, does, does Rebecca Romaine even ex- exist in this world? I guess not. Because she didn't grow old. I mean, or older, not that, old. Right. That that doesn't uh, make any sense either. I mean, come on, people. Write a freaking movie. Stick with the the relevance of it. Right. Man. Come on. Maybe they just checked out at that point. <laughs> yeah, maybe, dude. I, I don't know. But the ending was decent. I really liked the ending. The end action, the the fatalities by Magneto and... and, and, uh, uh, and how come Magneto has to have a, a loved one die to evil? Magneto's always doing evil. <laughs> you know, if, if he's not doing evil because some loved one died, he's doing evil because he needs money. And the way the government gave him land after everything he did? Why does he need money? He's Magneto. He could just walk into a vault and take it. Magneto uh, was using the money I'm to, just saying, to buy he... certain things that he needed because he couldn't Things that he couldn't create. Well, he would see, just he walk would, into a vault and take it. Though. Well, no, yeah, yeah. He, you know, ripped the gold out of a out of a you know secure truck or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, or just the entire vault out of the bank and have it land right yeah. at his feet. You see, the thing is, is that Magneto built a, I guess you could call it a satellite in the comics. Where him and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants resided. Right. Well, the government never gave them land. They were evil. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm fine with them changing the story. It just, when you change a story, it has to make sense within... Right. that doesn't make sense. ...the story. You know, why would government give him land... To not be evil anymore? No. To get them out of their hair? Good. To, to um, you know, it just didn't make any sense. <laughs> it didn't make any sense, exactly. But the ending, like I was saying, like I was trying to get to, is that the fatalities that Nightcrawler did and that Magneto did were freaking awesome. They were awesome. Right. Great effects. They were awesome, but here's another problem with the uh, Nightwalker or Night Nightcrawler. Uh, Nightcrawler. Suddenly, he has no limit as to where he can go. Well, not necessarily that, but you know how he has to see where he's going. Mm-hmm. So he says that in the very beginning of the movie, he says, "Oh, I can't see the thing; it's spinning too fast." Right? And okay, so that holds up to where it's supposed to be, but then there's shit flying around. You know? Yeah, right. And, like, if you just pop in somewhere, there's no telling that there's this big-ass piece of metal thing flying around, floating around in the shit that you can't already see, you know, or that you can already not see, and expect to come out with, you know, no injuries, like a metal piece stuck in your neck or your leg or, right. you yeah, know, something. You know, and then, then they decide he, somebody needs a helmet. Right? You know? 
That's what that's uh, also there were a lot of holes in there. Now look. Uh Storm, she's a powerful character. But she's not Iceman. Right. And yet they used her as Iceman. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. She was Iceman in space. Yeah. Uh, speaking of space, why did every freaking character have to say something about space? That was like Atlantic Ram bullshit there. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. But it was it came That's out Pacific Rim. Yeah. So it was basically a ripoff of Pacific Rim. Um, oh, okay. It's like the B movie or C movie even because it was terrible. Right. Uh, where everybody in the cast, even the nobodies, had to say, "What is that?" <laughs> it was like every, it was like thirty people. That was like twenty minutes of the movie. Right. Uh, was people saying, "What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that?" Same, same. I got the same feeling from from that, like, oh, we're going to space. We're going to space. Oh, space! Now we're straight, now we're in space. Right, dude. How many freaking times do you have to say the word space <laughs> in one scene? We get it. Take three spaces out and add something else in. Cool, you know. No one had a space suit. He had to improvise one on deep. And then when Gene goes over there, there's multiple rips in the hull of the ship. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Well, she can create the force field. That's, you know, they show us that. At the right, the but she didn't do that. It, well, apparently it was, it was supposed to be Storm keeping the air pressure in. Well, but it, I think it was more of the unspoken thing that they already showed us. that she, Not necessarily that they were going to show us that her, her making the force field and all that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was um, really, I, that didn't bother me as much. There was but one thing I was really hoping to see during that fight scene that I didn't get to see, and that is Nightcrawler has this other fatality where he can he can decide just how much of someone else that he teleports. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been cool too. But I really liked his his uh, his train fatality there. That was yeah. pretty darn cool. Yeah. Um, I was I was pleasantly surprised with it because I really I had very very low expectations for this movie. I mean, very very low. Um, but it surprised me, you know. At, towards the end, the very beginning, like I said, when uh, the opening scenes where we we meet Jean Grey as a little girl and her family and the car accident and all that, the car accident was, was really awesome. Like. Like the the special yeah. effects and everything, it was really good, really good CG and the whole flipping it upside down. I couldn't tell that it was they were not actually, you know, in a crash. Right. You know, um, I, I felt it was really good. I kind of caught the dad still being alive though because of the whole arm twitching, moving thing. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, and see, that's that's uh, there's another thing that was wrong with this movie, and that is is that it, it's never the Phoenix. It's only Gene, and they and they try to go back and forth like it's the Phoenix. No, it's Gene. No, 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 it's the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's the Phoenix is not its own entity with its own agenda and its own power. It's all Jean with her powers amped up to eleven. Mm -hmm. But in the in actuality, it is supposed to be the Phoenix's own entity, and then Jean Grey her own thing. Exactly, kind of like the whole thing. Bruce, yeah. Banner, Bruce yeah. Banner, yeah, and uh, and the, and you know during the whole uh, M Cron Crystal Saga. Right, they she announces, "I'm I am Phoenix." You know what I mean? I will, I will destroy you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Phoenix has more powers than just ramping your powers up. You could, you could create, destroy with the Phoenix Force. You can. It's it's a godlike force that you can use to make godlike decisions. <laughs> yeah, I kind of explain. It's kind of like having the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. Well, like I said, they kind of explained that when they were talking about rebuilding their planet. And yeah. Just 
the, it destroying the but planet. They're acting but when like, she was, when they were one, they didn't do that. Right. Yeah. And they they went into how the Phoenix Force is a world destroyer, but it wasn't ever the Phoenix Force. It was just the that thingamabobber we're chasing across it's the universe. The blob. Right. It's <laughs> the blob. The, the space blob. No. Was that Galactus in there? I thought I saw a little <laughs> bit of uh, that one guy from, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought it was Galactus at first, because, you know, Don't Galactus forget. was... The scariest and, thing in the and world Fox's is a cloud. Galactus is a fucking cloud that's coming towards her. Yes, it's always these clouds. Terrible decision, Fox. Uh, but, you know, this Wait. is it. This is the last one, and I'm kind of thankful. You know, after what Marvel did with the, the Avengers, I can't wait to see what they do with the X-Men. And I also can't wait to see one unified Marvel universe yeah. where they can tell stories properly. Yeah, I'm waiting on that Namor movie. Uh, I think they're letting it cool down with the whole Aquaman crappy movie. Right. And then they're going to bring in their, their Namor movie. Because um, Kevin Feige said that Namor is like his favorite character too so mm -hmm. and then I think there's some rights issues where Marvel does own the rights kind of like the Holtz right you know where right. Universal owns the rights to distribute uh, the Hulk movies that's why they keep putting him in other movies mm -hmm. so we'll see about that too I, I want to I want to see Namor yeah there. I want to see who they cast as Wolverine uh, I'm done with Hugh Jackman and you know he, he did a great he's job done with it too. <laughs> he, he did a great job, and he does a great job with Ryan Reynolds. But he was just not right for the part for me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I, in, in my him. opinion, he grew into the part. I he thought. did grow into it, and yeah. I'm not saying he was bad. Logan was a great movie, had its problems, but a great movie, one of yeah. Fox's best uh, yeah. uh, X Men movies ever made. Uh, actually, it was the best X Men movie ever made. Because uh, Deadpool, Deadpool wasn't an X Men movie. That's true. Uh, but as far as like the X Men universe that Fox owned, Deadpool, Deadpool Two, and and Logan are the best movies they put out. Uh, in my opinion, it's unfortunate, you know. Yeah, it's unfortunate that they kind of got good with these R rated movies, and they dropped down mm -hmm. with the you know. And then there was no Hellfire Club, which was also an important part of the storyline. Yeah. Instead, the Hellfire Club was the aliens. And the person who played, uh, oh, what's her name? Yeah, the girl with the white hair. She's supposed to be the one that turns into diamonds and has psychic powers. Uh, but they already did her. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, but they killed Jennifer Lawrence. They're going to change the storyline that much. Yeah. They killed Mystique. No, oh, yeah, I know. But I'm just saying that she was already in a movie. Why use her again? Uh, I believe Jessica. Well, and and you know Jessica the, Jones. The Hellfire Club was led January by January Jones. The Hellfire Club was led by uh, it was a Kevin Bacon's yeah character, and yeah, so the Hellfire Club was led by them, and they tried to manipulate the Phoenix into doing what they want by having a, this powerful illusionist create all these illusions. Yeah, and. Uh, when she f figures out what she did, she gets really mad. And then the Phoenix latches onto that anger and it's like, what's this? I like it. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there was, I mean, you, you didn't have to, they didn't have to change that much of the storyline. You know, I understand you got two hours to tell a story. Yeah. Right? And these storylines, the Avengers, uh, the rest of the Marvel Universe, nothing to do with them. Okay? It was all X-Men and mutants and all that. I just wonder... Now, I guess Spider-Man Far From Home is introducing a multiverse. Yes. So, maybe the X-Men just exist in one of the facets of the multiverse. Maybe. Because we all know Mysterio is a freaking liar. That's true. So that's true. Uh, except for you folks that don't watch or read comic books or watch 
the uh, old school cartoons or any of that stuff, then you probably don't know that he's a liar. So spoiler. Here, here's a spoiler <laughs> alert for for Far From Home. Mysterio is famous for making his own monsters to fight. It's all a show so he can get popular. But see, here's what's interesting to me. I, I would be okay if they had... So, okay, so Mysterio, he's a special effects wizard in the, in the comics and everything. And he makes his own monsters. But what if he is from the multiverse, okay? And he, he has these four mutants or people with powers or, you know, whatever, that are helping him. Like Hydro Man, Sandman, Molten Man, all these Eternals, basically. Right. Or uh, Elementals, not Eternals. Uh, <laughs> the Elementals helping him to make him look like a, a hero. So they're changing the story a little bit, but for the most part, it's still the same. And that's what I like about Marvel, is they'll change it a hair, but they'll keep the majority of it intact. You know, that's what Marvel does best. I'd say this movie was somewhat above average in quality. I would say so, too. That's, But I have a harsher rating than you, you too, I think. Right. Well, you know, in, in my rating, five, five is average. See, in mine, lower than five is average. <laughs> <laughs> so... And it, a, a five, and to also, me, is a... A good movie. I also consider sound effects, special effects, editing, all yeah. that stuff. But I mean, the theater was so packed; it was just hard to get a a, a sense of what, uh, how good it was. You know? You mean the three of us? All three of us were in that theater. <laughs> uh, I mean, granted, it has been out what a week, two, <laughs> two weeks. Um, but, but, okay. So here's how I I, I rate the movie. I rate it, I, I walk in, automatic 10, no matter what my feelings are, uh, you know, before the movie, mm -hmm. okay? So I walk in, automatic 10. First 15 minutes of the movie, it stayed at a 10. Then it did the time jump to 1992. Automatic freaking one, one star taken away just because of Jennifer Lawrence's performance because it was so terrible. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then that's how I, I do the movie. Is every time I see something I don't like, that's not Gets explained. Another little point away. Um, that just doesn't make any any actual sense within the story that they're telling. I, I, I take a star away. Okay. You know, or a half a star, or a quarter of a star, even. Depending on you know? how bad the the sin is. Right. Exactly. Um, and I got it down to a one star, man. Seriously. The, the best thing about about it going in was uh, the music was really good. I really enjoyed the music. It didn't throw me off guard like Captain Marvel with the, the wacky freaking um, decision to put in I'm just a girl in the middle of a fight scene. Right. Um, but it also didn't throw me off like Aquaman's epic build up to nothing music. Um, and then the effects... And then, and then that last act where it just got better and better right. with all the action and everything, they felt that it earned three stars back with that because mm. the fatalities and the actual, right. how good it was. Well, please, movie people, no more evil clouds. Yeah, no okay. clouds. No more evil clouds and no more tentacles. Why do, I, I am done with tentacles. Okay, the right. Kraken, cool. But not every bad guy or evil thing has to have freaking tentacles. Right. Okay? Doesn't have to happen. I'm not afraid of tentacles. <laughs> okay? Right? They're only scary if they're on the rice. Yeah. <laughs> With the purple sauce. Anyway. So, that's our rating. You got a seven and a half mm -hmm. from Big Ben. You got a four... I think it was a four, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, a four from Jake Vamp. Grandma? Uh, mine is more along uh, yours. Mine? Mm -hmm. So Grandma gives it about a four. And remember, my four is an average film. Wasn't great. Wasn't terrible. I mean, yeah, you could probably wait till it comes out on DVD. You know? Um, 
but I, I'll yeah. probably bring my son to this because he really wants to yeah, see it, like and it. I think it's worth uh, having him see because he he's he likes the X Men. It'll probably be his first X Men movie because he's really into the Avengers right now. So right. Uh, so I mean, it's you <laughs> this know, is gonna be his first X Men movie. Yeah. Oh man. The go. Poor kid. <laughs> go. He can at your X-Men. own discretion. At your own discretion. Five dollar movie day. Whatever. Uh, I think this is definitely a wait to DVD movie. You know, uh, uh, it it really felt like a lot of the writers and a lot of the people just kind of checked out already. Well, they did a lot of reshoots towards the end of the movie too. Oh yeah, I I heard I heard that. Uh, Yeah, I heard. And I mean, it kind of shows too because you. You know, I don't know if the beginning of the movie was a reshoot or what, but the beginning of the movie, that first 15 minutes was good. Then they did the time jump, and then it was bad, and then it was like that last end of the movie, like probably where they did the reshoots, was really good, and it showed. Now, I have a question. The the memory that we see at the beginning when they're driving, right? Mm -hmm. It shows the mother and the father turned around and looking. Mm-hmm. Right, and then she does her little, ah, and then the car wrecks. Right, well, in the flashback with the father, it shows something different. It shows the mom fall asleep and slunch over on the no, steering wheel. It little. actually did show that in the first. You just, it, it was just a, like yeah. a, a split second where she just yeah. went. I saw that. Too. Okay, like that. okay, okay. Yeah, um, but it, it was just a split second. You barely could see it. Um, but yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. But well. We're, uh, after seeing this, I'm glad that Marvel's getting <laughs> Fox and, yeah, and all I'm the properties. Yeah, I'm definitely glad. Uh, let's let's uh, hope that uh, that we don't do another Phoenix Saga. Oh man, For yeah, no while. more Phoenix Sagas. For a while. Not Although I have complete faith that Marvel will do it justice. Just let's, there are let's wait ten years. Other storylines that ten are years. just as good. You know, ten years. The Jane of Age. The Brood, any of those. Come on, something else. The Sentinels. The Sentinels, yeah. Do some Sentinels, real and do them right. Sentinels. Not 10 foot tall Sentinels. Real Sentinels. Do, I don't care if you do a carbon copy of the cartoon. Yeah. Bring Morph in. Morph is my favorite character. I know oh, it's, a, it's an obscure character uh, because that's where he first showed up was in the animated series. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I love that character. He is my absolute favorite Marvel character. He, and then well, they turned him into really an alien. He had a really big part in uh, uh, the Age of Apocalypse. In the Age of Apocalypse, he doesn't die, and he doesn't. Do, no, he joins the X Men, and he's. Well, the Age of Apocalypse is it. See the the comics, the, way different from the movie. Right. In the Age of Apocalypse comics, uh, the X Men were led by Magneto, right. and its members were Sabretooth, Blink. Uh, Morph, uh, Rogue, Gambit, uh, one they called Wild Child, uh, and uh, what X Man I think, and oh, see like there was all, all, all the other X Men like that was where I saw Nightcrawler. <laughs> Somebody's waggling his, their finger in his face, so he reaches out and grabs the finger and teleports across the room. With, his with the finger, yeah. <laughs> it drops it like. But that's what I want. I want a good X Men story but that he, does not yeah. involve the Phoenix Saga. We got what two trilogies with Phoenix sagas with, Ye- with right? Phoenix at the end, and neither one of them was told right. Yeah, You're not I even mean, close. Well, this one was definitely way. Way miles above uh, the first X Men Three. Yeah. Okay. Miles above it. That yeah. was like a minus four. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was definitely a lot of problems that with that. Yes. Just complete garbage. Um, but at least now with Marvel having them, hopefully they won't have as many uh, plot holes and and uh, just. 
differences in I hope man I want I want to see a good Fantastic 4 I want to see a good X-Men movie and I want to see their villains done right too Remember the last Fantastic 4 with the evil villain Mr. Disco Ball Yeah <laughs> I wasn't sure whether to laugh or, or start dancing Right <laughs> Saturday night fever <laughs> John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification Hit bell. Hit that notification button, and then the next time we go see a good movie or a bad movie, we'll let you know. Uh, You'll come with us. And hopefully, we'll be doing something else uh, pretty soon other than just movie reviews. We got to get everything set up. We, we're, we're just starting out, so we're getting microphones and lighting and cameras and all that good stuff. So just keep tuning in. Like I said, hit that notification bell so you know when we post something and tell a friend. That's right. Take it easy, guys. Late.